What's up, YouTube? Well, this is going to be the second half to my March update grow space. This is going to be the upstairs uh, in the loft. This will be all the flowers and stuff that are growing in the loft. And starting with what we're looking at, this is actually, this is not one of my rebloomers. This is something I picked up. This is a Oncidium Wildcat uh, in full bloom. As you can see, it's got quite a bit of a stalk if you look at it compared to my hand. So it's it's pretty big, and uh, there's a fungus gnat flying around. I'll take care of him. But uh, we got this Phalaenopsis is opening another bloom. With this fowl, it had two spikes the last time I've shown it, and the two spikes had five individual branching coming off of or branches coming off of it. So it had a total of seven. However, the uh, I cut one off because it kept suffering from a lot of bud blast. So I got rid of the excess spike repotted it into a new container with more moisture retention because it was potted in those clear containers that you normally get with a, a fowl that you pick up at uh, grocery stores and big box stores to let its roots kind of move around into the medium. I got all that wet sphagnum and actually there was peat moss packed up real tight near the crown and I didn't really like that too much because that would just cause rot. It seems happier now. Normally I'm always skeptical with fowls. They usually react badly to repotting while they're in bloom. They'll just drop all their buds and then you have to start over again. This one doesn't seem too bad, I guess, because I eliminated the extra spike. I actually cut the spike a little short because there was there was a little growth on it, like coming out of, I think, this node here. Where was it? It's hard to see the spike I'm trying to point at here. Oh, here it is. There was a little node here, and it may actually end up being another spike later on. I may just cut it off completely, but right now I'm just going to enjoy the, the spike that's left over with the flowers. And there's another one opening up right there. Um, this is one of the fragrant phalaenopsis I own. Oh, there's a, there's a message. Um, there's a fragrant phalaenopsis, which is a beautiful one, which is one of my two fragrant phalaenopsis. I actually have one over here that's fragrant. This one here. Now this one is funny because one night I was busy going through, I guess, taking a dead flower off this one. I took the little pollen sack that was up under here and I said, you know what, let me see what I can do. So I stuck it on this flower. And this flower is starting to fall apart now. I don't know if that means it's going to start producing a seed pod, I don't know. I don't know what I could do with it because I don't have agar to grow the seeds in or a flask, so I don't know what would actually happen. But it was just something to do to see what would to see what would happen. And then here we have some date palms. They're doing well. I mean, you can see the size of it compared to my hand. Let's see if I can turn the camera a little bit. It's pretty big. I mean, this thing has got long, strappy leaves. This one's doing good. I put them up here because there's more light. They've never seen the light of day outside. Here's one in a little container that was, you know, started in a, well, I transplanted it in here just because it was a hair bigger than what it was in before. These are my Latoria type, well, this is my Latoria type Dendrobium. Doing well in its little container. You know, near a facing a west window. And this is the, my rescue Oncidium No ID uh, that I got from an animal hospital local here. Uh, I asked the ladies if I could take it, and they said sure, because they didn't even know where it was, and it was sitting in a corner. It was completely shriveled. As you can see, the pseudobulbs in the back are just like, they were like, they were like, this is the way they look now, but trust me, they were like, they like prunes before, and I just gave it some water. Over time, I let it nourish itself, gave it a little fertilizer. It grew a new pseudobulb, and on that new pseudobulb, it produced a spike. So, it just goes to show you that just because a plant is sick or hurt or looks like it's, it's, it's not doing too well, if you can revive it, they may come back for you. And I, I know Oncidiums are pretty resilient, especially because they go from old pseudobulb, new pseudobulb, flower, then they go to pseudobulb, flower, pseudobulb, and so forth. Up here we have my Arangus biloba. This is a very sick BLC um, uh, Morning Glory. This is my... Brassavola nodosa. Well, my Brassavola nodosa, nodosa, holy crap, I can't talk today. And I've had coffee. Nodosa little stars um, never bloom for me, so I put it up in a west-facing window upstairs uh, to see if it gets more light, it would produce some blooms, and it's a little warmer. 
One thing about these I've noticed, and I know if you probably, if you guys watch Brad's greenhouse, he mentioned this too with one of his brass of all, is they do have weak root systems. They don't really seem to have roots that kind of ramble through the pot and anchor themselves. They just kind of stay near the surface. This is the same thing I'm getting with this, and it's kind of hard to see because of the camera and the light, but they're just, they're just near the surface. And I put it in a finer bark medium. That's all I put it in. I didn't put it in anything else, and I put it in a square, clear container just so I could see the root growth, and it just stays near the top. This is a Neostylus, doing very well. As a matter of fact, my Neostylus, I believe, if it'll focus, has a little bloom spike on it right there. And it won't focus. So hopefully I'll have blooms from the Neostylus in the, probably the springtime or the early summer. Up there. This is a rescue, well not a rescue, but this thing wasn't really in great shape, but it was a kiki or an extra growth off of a mother... Uh, Darwinara orchid. Doesn't seem to be doing that bad. If it came from a decent plant, there's a root there, so I guess it's not doing that bad. It's rambling through the pot. It came from a healthy specimen from a, a gentleman who grows orchids from, I think, um, Tewksbury orchids here in New Jersey. So we got that growing. We have a bonsai um, Natal plum. It's been up here for quite a while. It's getting really leggy. I haven't really taken much care of it. I've been kind of neglecting it lately. I give it water when it needs it. The leaves are really dusty. It just needs a real repotting. I need to check the roots out in the spring. I need to go through this thing like no tomorrow to really get it back into tip-top shape. Up here, we have... Let's see what we got going on up here. This is a Cattleya Carmella Spring. Pink Spice Carmella. I think it's a hybrid. I'm not sure. It doesn't. It didn't say on the tag. It just said Cattleya. There's a new new growth on it. It has bloomed for me before, and it's a beautiful bloom. Uh, it's doing all right up in the window. It's getting a lighter green color to its leaves, so it's getting plenty of light. I'm um, just hoping that it continues to do so. So I hang them. Like I said, I have skylights, and if you notice, I have this faux stained glass in the skylight, so they can hang in the south-facing skylight, and they're not going to get direct blasted from the direct sun. They'll get it filtered through those colored stained glass. And then here we have my Neo Phoenicia falcata, who's doing very well, actually. I mean, I could get this thing to grow like a weed. It grows roots. It, it, it produces little offsets. I just cannot get this thing to flower. And I'm always mindful of the watering because I don't want to overwater them. And I know in the summer they probably like a lot of water. But up here it's really dry, so I just miss them daily. Maybe twice a day. I just kind of walk up and just give them a spray. Now over here, we have growing like a little weed, is a Calamondin orange. I still have to take some of the oranges off because it's growing, it's growing it's basically it's spring growth now, and I want to prune it back so it grows back hard closer to the trunk of the tree. It's pretty big, but it's kind of leggy, and I want the, some of the growth to kind of go back in here to keep it tight. And then next to it is a hibiscus. This is a rescue hibiscus. I took it from Lowe's maybe a year or two ago. I... Um, Saw that it was half dead, brought it back to life. It didn't bloom for me the first year. The second year it gave me blooms. This year it's growing back like a little weed. No matter how many times I prune it, it doesn't seem to care. It just grows, 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 grows. It's just with hibiscus, you give them lots of light and lots of water in their, in their growing season, and they will produce lots of blooms. So this one is in a nice big pot, like a one-gallon pot, and it's in the south-facing skylight. Hopefully, it will produce blooms up here. I'm not betting on it, but we shall see. Now, it doesn't have any bugs. I always check these things for bugs because if you have a hibiscus, you know that they have prone. They are prone to get all sorts of little pests, so I keep a systemic insecticide on it, too, just to be safe. Well, guys, other than that, I have a cat lay in here following me around. As you can see, I grow cat layers, too. She's just happy to be in here. She loves it when I talk on the phone or when I'm doing videos. She just loves it. I guess she thinks I'm talking to her. And other than that, that's what's going on up here. I'll do a small, short little video um, for the window downstairs in the kitchen. We have some plants in there that are doing pretty well. All right. Well, you guys take it easy. I will talk to you later.